Good evening my friends, I'm guessing tonight you're sitting there thinking about your Star Trek Online build and you're wondering whatever happened to the good old cannons. Well, tonight is the night I'm going to show you a good old fashioned cannon build that can still be used today in today's uh, beamfire at will overload that everybody seems to be using constantly all the time. I mean that's basically the reason I'm doing this video is because I get a little bit sick of the old linear everybody has to do the same sort of beam fire at will beta build to actually get any sort of DPS so I thought I'd uh, go for a bit of an old cannon one and show you guys something a bit different okay right actually let me warp out of space dock because any sort of traits that you have for space doesn't really show up very well in uh, in ground, well you don't actually see them at all, it doesn't show you any boost so it's better to do it in star dock space dock sorry right okay and also let me move away from these guys because the noise from their ships and stuff can be pretty horrible okay as you can see ship I'm going to be using the ball tin raider don't know why, love it, five weapons up front that's probably the main reason plus it has all the uh, the right sort of abilities like the intel and whatnot. All right, okay, because I'm going disruptor, I use the old disruptor green. Look, looks pretty sick. But obviously, when you're out this far away, you can't really see it anyway. Okay, let's go for weapons. So, what I'm going to show you is not exactly the best in the world. Obviously, if you're looking for the 100k DPS, don't use this sort of build. This is just for those spike damage lovers, you know, with a nice cannon, bit of speed piss people off okay, so the first one I'm going to use is the enhanced biomolecular photon torpedo launcher this one, honestly, on high yield 3, it's the only torpedo that does a one torpedo high yield big ball of death, basically that is untargetable and is quite quick, so it doesn't get slowed down like the others that are pretty useless, takes 10 seconds to get to them, by that time it's dead. So that one's a great one, I love it. I've pretty much used them all now, spread's okay, but you're only getting sort of 60k damage maximum. Oh no, I'm probably lying, you probably get more than that anyway. I know about a million people will probably comment straight away saying, no, you can get higher, but whatever. I'm saying this one does a big hit, one hit. If you get that on the whole, everything's gone. Okay, then also I'm going to go for I'm going to go for a latches. So decided what the hell might as well go and use a latches. So I'm going to use the old heavy crescent because I've got it on uh, epic, and because you get the two piece with the bio neural, which I like to use because you get the uh, you get the 23.8 critical severity, which is really nice. Plus, what else you get on there? The starship hull cap and the control expertise. The uh, two-piece also gives you the disruptor damage boost for what we're using and the starship shield caps. Now to be honest, the shield caps on that isn't that great, it's probably about 600 off here, but you can swap it out, you know, swap it out for say the Terran Task Force one maybe. I can't even remember the two pieces on that, but I think the other console's pretty crap. Oh, look at that the cryptic bug where you can't see what the two pieces do <sighs> great god knows, yep, yeah. okay cryptic bug okay, right, so what else are we going to go for? we're going to go for the uh, dual heavy cannons these are the uh, accuracy 4, 40, oh actually I've got the accuracy 50 but I've only got a 40 there so that's got a bit more quick charge which is okay but I'm pretty sure that the accuracy because you're hitting such high accuracy gives you a massive quick chance anyway so well it seems to work for me anyway so right the Alachi beam basically so I'm gonna that's why I like the four or five weapons up front because I like to have the beam the three cannons I do like to sometimes have a, you know another sort of Alachi cannon in there or get rid of the heavy sometimes because it is a bit slow but it does have the uh, nice big firing arc and plus the critical severity on it is pretty hefty when it does hit so it is kind of worth it. 
Yep, so I like to have all those weapons up front, all for the big hit up front and damage. On the back is, you know, you've got to really have a coalition disruptor turret. You can't really go wrong with that. I mean, look at the proc on that one. That's, what is it, 2.5 charge for minus disruptor resistance rating for 30 seconds, and that stacks five times. That's pretty... OP in my eyes. Yeah, that, that's if it if it actually works. I mean, you know what this game is like. Half the stuff doesn't even work anyway, so who knows? But if it does what it says on the tin, then that's pretty damn good. Okay, right. So deflectors. I go for sort of splitting the two piece on the deflectors as well. Most people would say, you know, maybe you should have elite deflectors there with all the crap that comes with it. But whatever. And you know, uh, for this sort of build, the best one in my eyes would be because you're going for raw damage, spike damage. The two piece that comes with the what is it? The adapted macro. The two piece there is see it didn't bug out that time. Is the plus 25% torpedo plus the hull plus the auxiliary power settings. I mean that's pretty damn good. 8.9 auxiliary boost out of that. Pretty sweet with the two piece on that. And plus the uh, shields are pretty good. I mean, they're pretty high to start with. Um, some of the other shields, people say you should go for maybe the elite fleet shields as well, but where are they? Where are they? Oh, lost them. Jesus. Sorry, guys. There they are. Oh, I was on them straight away. Yeah, that sort of uh, disruptor damage thing and the extra proc. I always find that the shields are... Pff, gone before they actually like get that protection then you're pretty much screwed so I don't know I think it's an over damage sort of thing those shields are for bigger ships I think I think these ones do well enough plus the placate on them and the uh, when you get it over like the master on it upgrading it you do actually get the extra anti-proton defense as well by 20% so that's a pretty nice uh, extra boost okay plus the uh, to be honest, I'm not the best with the actual impulse and warps and all that sort of stuff. I go with what I read here that looks pretty good, so I haven't noticed a huge difference. I mean, some people say you should go for the uh, elite as well, you know, these elite fleet warp cores, that's for sort of cannon firing thing, yeah, 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 uh, because of the power drain, the, the uh, power transfer rate, that's the one. So some people say that's better for keeping your weapon power up and all that jazz, but and also the see the 3.3 percent all damage per subsystem. God knows if that's any good. I mean, I've never really noticed or missed it. So sod it. I don't bother using them. I go for the two piece on these instead. And plus, these are pretty good anyway. I mean, this one that goes well with a Intel ship in my eyes. If you're going to use. Uh, the override subsystem safeties here. If you're going to use that, then you might as well use these in my eyes because you see the thing there where it says 100% all damage resistance for 15 secs. That triggers once, like, you know, one of your systems has gone offline, and that's always going to happen when you're using this thing. So one of these are going to go off, then you're going to get 100% you know, defense, which can't be bad in my eyes. Uh, so yeah, that's why I go for that one. And the two piece on it is I'm not really too sure myself. Okay, right, so that's not too bad, you know, more shit more shield, more drain. It's worth having. I mean that one's good as well with the warp core. So it gives you the uh what is it? It gives you the Improves plat, you know, flow like the bit we were talking a minute ago. You know, keeps your cannon fire high when you're shooting loads. You know, stops your actual powers draining. So that's good as well. Plus the yeah, all the other little bits. Starship weapon system performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other thing with this is, where is it? What am I looking at here? Am I looking at the right thing? Maybe I'm not. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, going to sleep, right. So it allows each system to exceed the 125 um, and increases power levels over in combat. You know, it gives you a little bit more power again, so that's definitely worth having. Okay, right, that was a jumbled load of crap, wasn't it? 
I mean, these devices, if I had the uh, red matter capacitor, it would obviously be in there, but I don't, never got it. Pfft, don't know why. Because I'm stupid. I think I went on holiday when it came out, and by the time I got back, it was gone. So I just use that, and definitely that sub base field modulator. So, you know, it's a good thing to have. So you might as well have it. Plus, it's, uh, it's a good little bit of defense for not actually using much of a slot. So, why not? Okay, so engineering on this ship, uh, yeah, so it doesn't really matter if you have that there or there, but you've got to have the plasmonic leech, it is a must. Again, drains power from enemies and gives it to yourself, so who would not want that? People, I don't know why they say they don't use it, but I always do because I like to have my power levels at maximum and everything all the time. Uh, as I said before with this one, the binary infusion circuits that works with the two piece with the torpedo, so you get the boost there on the shield and the disruptor damage, as well as all the crit severity and everything. I like to use the rule 62, I mean this is my own personal preference, you, you can use pretty much anything in here, but I like the power transfer rate, you might as well have that up, plus the you get more flow caps as well, and the resistance, and the mine and torpedo damage for the biotorp as well. Alright, okay, moving on. So I like to move quick, so I slap this on here, this Polaric thingy that you get from the mission. So shame it doesn't have like a two-piece, doesn't work with anything else, which is a bit of a shame, because it is a pretty handy little console, I think, for speed. Uh, you don't have to have that again. These are my preferences. They don't make if you don't have them or if you want to use something else, it doesn't make a massive difference, really. Uh, and then I like to use this because I like to use the 7% cooldown reduction on bridge officer abilities. That's always good because, as you'll see in a minute, I'm a bit of a cheat with the old abilities, as you can probably see already down here. Okay, right. So, I mean, most people will use those sort of, what are those, plasma consoles in there that drain, you know, put plasma damage or proc over 2.5%. Uh, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Are they there? Let me see if I can show you one. There they are. Alright, so one of those things. But, I mean, it is good. I mean, three, three and a half thousand damage. Maybe I should have one in there, but... No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for that as well instead because, because I'm like a one-shot sort of hit style flying. There's no real point in having something that's gonna do damage over time. <laughs> that's probably really arguable, but at the moment we're not gonna use it anyway. I'm gonna use this one. Okay, it's definitely this one for me because it's 25% maximum shields plus again, so quite a lot of shields there and the exotic particle generator even though I don't really use it but I haven't got the other ones so I'll go for that one but it is good I mean that makes a big difference you can actually see uh, let's take it off see down to 13 so that's a massive difference that one definitely a worthwhile little thing to have on there that's all I really need on sort of shield boosts uh, alongside with all the other bits you know it gives you quite high shields for an escort uh, not an escort a raider okay so consoles tactical consoles Okay, I think everybody pretty much says always go for five tactical consoles of the same type, blah, 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 at, at Epic if you have them. Uh, for some reason, I don't have any disruptors at Epic because... Why? Because because I went phaser for Epic and anti-proton like everybody else did before, and I haven't got around to actually epicking these little bad boys up. Uh, let's see how far away we are. Uh, well, probably could. Should we give it a try? See if we can get one. Guys, we could be lucky. No, Ooh, running out. Come on, we can do this. Oh, bugger! No, it's not going to do it, is it? Ah, oh, son of a bitch! Last one. No. Ah, oh, sorry. Oh well, that would have been good if that pulled off, but it didn't. And don't actually do what I just did then. <laughs> That's not how you epic weapons, that was just me just Russian roulette in. I thought what the hell, got a few spares so I did it. 
don't listen to me if you think that's the way you do upgrading things because it really does not always work like that all right okay moving on so yep everybody says that you should have five in here but I say nay I say I can definitely get the same sort of damage without five in here or, or there or thereabouts um, at the moment right okay so let's take this weapon as a base right so 3099.4 pretty hefty damage that's pretty sweet okay so with that in say that's a console that's the ambush console it gives you 25 cannon damage let's see what that takes off if that actually does anything three out of, it's marginal it's like 25 or not even that more a bit more than that if you can do the math I can't work it out and I'm not trying to th even think I'm gonna try so what was I gonna do I was gonna get another disruptor one so where we got where we got we got disruptor one right okay so let's drag that in so where were we before so originally it was 309 wasn't it so that's not too bad that's no actually think about it, that's like 140 so that's nothing so for 140 DPS we might as well have this little console in there because this one is pretty sweet I mean obviously as you can see it's got the 25 cannon damage the 1% crit chance but the best thing on it is for the this is if you're going to do PvP I mean if you're not going to do PvP you might as well just put something in there that is cool you can you can pretty much put anything in there but I put this in ready for those PvP when you see the teleport there it's always good if you're getting chased by you know you're on your last legs you're getting chased by somebody and you can just plug this charging up all your abilities you know as you're running away so they think they're about to kill you plug that you'll then teleport three kilometers behind them using the radar sort of flanking damage and obviously an intel flanking boost as well with all your stuff going off all at the same time and it's a nasty little surprise for them and it does get everybody pretty much most of the time so worthwhile for that 100k dps and yeah, as i said before you know if you actually put that on instead it's, you barely notice it hardly okay so only three of these because this one here as well this one also two pieces with that little bad boy I'm pretty sure I said those two well, those two went together earlier but no I was wrong it's those two go together with the two piece and then that one and that one go together with the two piece so on this two piece here it's not that great but it's it seems to be pretty good because you get the 7.5 bonus phaser that bit who cares really it doesn't really do a lot anyway so let's have a look again let's do a little power check here so you have 3099 let's take that off see how much of a drop we get for that okay so it's a couple of a couple of hundred or whatever so it's nothing special but see with this as well it also has the photon projectile weapon damage so that helps the torp it helps my little torpy so 7624 and then what do we have there ah oh, we have a DC <laughs> that's what we have there Ugh. this is where some crazy youtuber hacks my bloody account just from that screen I have you, I have all your data I have your life in my hands this is anonymous <laughs> shit that would be funny wouldn't it if it actually happened alright ok so we're back in the game where was I? Right, okay, so we were doing power levels. We were here with the 281, blah, 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 and the torpedo at 76. Right, okay. Let's check that back in. So what do we have now with that? So we have 3099, so it's quite a nice little boost. Like 300 on both. 3, 400 on both. It's not too bad for that console. Plus you get the radiation damage as well. I mean, not to say I'm shooting a lot of radiation damage, but fuck it everything helps okay so I think we're done there for that really we are alright let's move on okay so what I would go for and it does help my build would be 
what we're going to do, we're going to look at skills, we're going to look at the guy's traits actually, sorry. I like the time reducing stuff, you know, like the temporal guys. I'm thinking these temporal power recharge thingies here. I wish I, uh, this guy had. <laughs> he wasn't this guy, I mean, think about it, like six months ago this guy was worth sort of 10 million or something, or 20 million or whatever he see. So obviously Muggins here goes buys it. Now, you can get the lovely temporal ones with 10% reducing time when the one you have to pay millions for only gives you five. Thanks Cryptic. Another one of your little blessings for me. So, eventually Godzilla, he will be put to, put to bed and I will get another one of these lovely little temporal guys with their 10% reduction. So I like to have the reduction in the old uh, tactical side also I have one in the engineering side I probably wouldn't bother with no, I probably won't bother with science because I only ever actually use one science ability so yeah I'll have 1.5 all damage whatever that will do and what else we got so we usually have another engineering on that also has the pirate trait as well so I might as well use that Okay, so Kaiser's trait, my traits. Would I use in the space? We would go for a bit of a blative shell to start with. I mean, this one in my eyes is pretty darn good. Pre, what is it? 10,000 damage to you, and you get all those hit points for three secs, plus a 33 all damage resistance as well. I mean, pff, it's a pretty good trade off in my books. Uh, the accuracy, because you always want to be accurate. <laughs> Uh, the automated rerouting this one here so you get the extra shield regeneration every time you use any of your abilities and as you can see it says you can use all those powers and it will give you that more defense secret command codes this one's more for pvp again well I don't know you don't know how much it actually affects on in FDFs because there's so much going on usually so who knows how many times you're being controlled or whatever but see what I mean a bit more damage resistance and confused disable hold placate for 10 secs that's pretty sweet got the old helmsman there I mean this is old school trait pretty good one flight and turn rate the evasive maneuvers this is good for PvP as well because you'll always be using your evasives inspirational leader uh, to be honest I don't really understand it what it does but I was told it was good so I use it something that's good most bar starship skills blah 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 who cares right okay all I know is it's good so worth it <laughs> that's a really crap explanation you can probably read it and you'll know exactly what we're talking about but at this moment it's too late and I can't really remember so intense focus, another one there where you get for every 15 seconds in combat you get a boost your accuracy and shield pen. So most of the time you're in combat, so you might as well have a bit of a boost. And the same one there, these are all the three that you got from like I think they were the Zindi, and the Zindi originally came out. You got all three of these, you got the intense focus, you got the momentum for the speed, and then you got the one with the shield, so pattern recognition. So all three of them I think are pretty good and well worthwhile. Okay, so traits, the traits I go for, so I love this little uh, energy web, it's really good for PvP, I mean really bloody annoying, everybody has it pretty much and you'll find yourself in a web all the time, a little hint here, it's great to have that, if you rock and roll at the right moment, you will just waste that for somebody else, so it's, if you can get that time well with that, when somebody else is shooting you with that, it's pretty great. Uh, what we've got here, highly specialised, uh, what is it, so this is for your special powers like your your intel and your pilot powers, so it reduces the recharge time on the abilities, plus you get the whole restoration, blah 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 blah, stacks up to five times, pretty damn good. I like to use super weapon ingenuity, this one here is, <sighs> this one here is my optional. I could either use this or so that one there gives you it like it's a double tap basically it's old school sort of um, 
PvP cannon build double tap beam overload. So you do one beam overload three, and then you get a free one afterwards. So it's quite good. I do like it. But I can swap it. Sometimes I swap four. I mean, anybody know if it's actually worthwhile? This one. I love it. I don't know why. It's just. Maybe it's just the special effects, the prettiness of it. But this one here seems really cool because I use higher yield and beam overload 3 I suppose when that one's on you get on the high yield you get like a big green I don't know what it's called I, I can't remember what the original moves called but it sort of repels everybody and they get a big a bit of kinetic damage and then when you're firing a beam overload it uh, like saps their shields and stops them cloaking so again for PvP that's pretty good you know it repels stops Romulans running away but I don't actually know if it's actually that good. I mean, I'll probably go for double BO in PvP over overwhelming, but I don't know. Anybody with any tips, anybody with any different thoughts of that one, that would probably be a helpful to me, because I'm not really too sure myself. But it's pretty anyway. It does look pretty. Especially when you get a, a load of Borg. If you get them all like getting sandwiched into a uh, somebody's grav well, fire a high yield with that, and it will just knock them all over like ping pong balls everywhere probably really pisses everybody else off in the, in the game actually because you think they're trying to drag it in closer and then you're just battering them all away so I think that's actually why I took it off because I think people are getting pissed off at me okay so you got to go for the reciprocate ah oh, you know how to say it because I don't whatever it's called there you get the 10% recharge time on the tactical and intelligence that's that's pretty sweet as well uh, so we got here. We got the go for the kill because I'm going for the cannon build. Uh, you get the critical hits uh, increase the duration of cannon. I mean, there's probably not a lot because I think only cannon rapid fire lasts for like 10 to 15 seconds. So you know, I think you'd only get six or nine seconds extra. I mean, who knows? It's it's long enough anyway for that cooldown to be ready again. So you get pretty much constant cannon. Okay, so space rex. Let's have a look what we got here. So, you'd, again, space reputations is down to yourself. I mean, I use this because it goes well with my build. Because that bio torp, when I use it on a high yield, it seems to be like a destructible torpedo, but it isn't. And I've noticed that this definitely makes it go quicker. Well, I think it does anyway. It seems to. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it definitely seems to make it go a lot quicker. Plus, you get the torpedo damage anyway, so that's that's the main reason I use it I mean I could swap it out and I would swap it out for something like uh, probably the increased ship flight turn speed that one maybe for PvP yeah maybe okay and then we got the uh, what's the other one the damage resistance as you're getting battered so that's always handy just in case you're getting a good kick in that gives you some pretty good defense in my eyes uh, this one here, that's basically like your elite fleet shields. You know, it's pretty much the same proc as that, but uh, without having to use the shields. So that's a must in my eyes. Yeah, definitely good. This one here, the uh, kinetic damage resistance based on uh, auxiliary power. As you can see, my auxiliary power is not that high. Uh, shame this thing's in the way. But if you have that on it does actually give you a quite good defense overall I mean as you can notice I haven't really got a lot of defensive consoles here and I'm already at sort of 30 like all round resistances but with that trait and the auxiliary if you put it up uh, let me just plug that see what it goes up to there so there you go it's going up to 19.3 you know, it's gone up a little bit on the defence, but obviously I've got other things to, you know, if I plug this, so to speak, the defence goes up even more, which is quite good, and that comes along in a minute. Let me just, let me cover that in a second. Okay, so back to the traits, and obviously with the other space one, I just use the 7.5 bridge officer ability recharge speed. I think that 100% it did, yeah, it just propped. You know that one I was talking about there with the engines because I just uh, did override, override subsystem safeties that proc'd and gave me the 100% defense so it went up to like 60 
So that's pretty good for 15 seconds just from using those two combo together. Uh, right, let's go back. Sorry, I keep jumping backwards and forwards here. But I'm trying to get as much in as I can without having you lot sit here for 25 minutes and listen to me waffle on. Because I've watched enough YouTube videos in my time to realise you don't want to hear the waffle. You just want to know how to do it. Okay, right. So, some stations, right. For my build, obviously this is me. You don't have to do everything I do. You can do it, you can mix things around yourself, but... So I'm just going to have a quick puff. Yes, we vape today. Right, okay. So, yeah, as I was saying, you don't have to copy me exactly, but... This is what I do. This is my little build. This is for me. Right, okay, so my Intel guy, this is my temporal dude. He's sitting here, this is an Intel spot with... See, I use override subsystem safety is one. I mean, you should use two, really, probably because it's quicker and, you know, your engines go... Everything goes offline for a lot less, but I've got other things that actually stop this all going offline anyway, so it only goes off for one second, so... Plus you get more power for number two, but I like to have a little play around with something else in here. You know, in this spot, I like to sort of free it up for using, maybe for PvP you'd use evade target, target lock, you know. So when you're in that combat with somebody else, you can just plug this on them and pretty much they're, they're fucked, you know. They can't see you, they can't shoot you. You can run away or turn around and give them a battering for 15 seconds, which is pretty handy. Only for one target, so it's always good for those dogfights. Or you can uh, probably put that in there, the turbulence. That's pretty handy for, you know, your stupid cruiser guys beam spamming you with everything and all the rubbish. You can slap that on them and it, it does mess them up quite nicely. Usually makes them have to pug their uh, evasive manoeuvres, so later on in the fight that's already on cooldown and then you can just get stuck in or if you got to run away because they're battering you they can't pug it and chase you so it helps but for STFs I go for the kinetic magnet obviously it's got the what is it minus 20 kinetic damage resistant for 10 seconds uh, but it does say you know effect ends prematurely after foe takes 20,000 kinetic damage but I've seen some pretty heavy hits using this in conjunction with a high yield 3 and that big green torpedo thingy, the Biomanecla. I've seen some pretty good use out of it, so I use it just for fun. Okay, right, so beam overload 3. Okay, this is just something I would use. As I said, you don't have to copy my build, but please don't do fire at will. I'm getting sick of seeing all these beams flying around everywhere. Can somebody please get some cannons out or just not use beam friggin fire at will all the time stop sticking to the recipe builds everybody and try something a little bit different try a torpedo build I tell you what my next video if I bother to do one will actually be a torpedo build I'm gonna sod it I'm gonna do something really weird and shock you all with it right okay so that's that one beam overload 3 yep yeah, yep yeah. okay next guy so down here is my science dude and the only thing I use on science I ever use of a science ability and people are probably going to go why is hazard emitters one it's all I use just for a little bit of boost of health I don't see the point in using it I've never used science team in my life I mean it's probably thinking you're crazy because it debuffs you but god knows I never seem to be buffed enough to you know unbuffed or whatever to actually need science team and uh my job as a raider in my eyes as PvP is to uh, get in, hit hard, and run, or <laughs> stay in the fight and die and let the other guys get you know get away or whatever. That's my job, so I'm not too worried about staying alive. Plus this one here, if you use the pilot thing, you can use this, hold together one. Now that people might not reckon it's great, but pff, that thing keeps you alive pretty much all the time in my eyes. Especially when you've got low hull and low shields, it's just constantly regenerating you as you're flying around because it's constantly getting cooled down by the other things we saw before. So it's constantly on cycle. Uh, right, okay, so this one, I, I use this just for the sake of, you know, why not? I mean, it's got pretty good uh, damage to shields, 20% for 20 seconds, that's pretty good. Uh, it might have a slow recharge speed, but 
Why not? I mean, you could put something else in there. You could put maybe an engineering team, or oh, you could probably use it probably for PvP actually. Maybe pilot team would be better because you get the uh, you know it stops you from getting stuck, and you can always bug it at the right moment and then get out of get out of shit basically with that one. So I'll probably change the pilot team. Yeah, probably would. But for STFs, I mean, anybody that says STFs are a challenge and they think they're a serious stow player, then <laughs> sorry to say, guys, come on. You and me all know that you could sit in the middle of any STF and just spam spacebar and most things would blow up. And that's when you know you need to move up to some PvP or something a little bit more challenging. Try an elite mission. Uh, so, engineering side we go... I always go emergency powder engines 3 because uh, as I said I like to move quick and it's good to have the power up and just keep zooming around everywhere. Go for the emergency auxiliary and um, inertial dampeners 1. Uh, I'll explain this because this goes with a uh, with a DOF that I'll show you in a minute. Um, so yeah, have that there. Have your powers to shields. I mean, honestly you don't need powers to shields 3 or engines 1 you don't need that. Shields one is good enough. It really is. Because with this as well and with everything else that's charging your shields, even if say you had like phasers, you can have quantum phasers on and then just constantly be charging your shields or using elite phasers and that gives you the proc as well. So that's if you're having trouble with shields, but I never seem to have trouble with shields. So I only have a one on. But you can swap these around if you want. All depends. Okay, so the last one is Mr. Godzilla again. He is there with his cannon rapid fire three. We got his high yield three. We got beta one. I mean, you could swap this. Uh, no, no. I'd say keep it like that. That's pretty good. Beta one is maybe not for PvP. Maybe you should swap, like, have Omega there, Omega one, and then uh, Torpedo two there. Maybe, but. Probably for PvP, not worth beta, it's not that great for PvP, but it's okay. I'll leave it there for STFs because it seems to work. Uh, chemocyte, chemocyte's good, and now it's got all cheap all of a sudden, so I went and bagged myself some chemocyte, which was quite sweet because I used to only ever have chemocyte 2, so it made me get stuck in this position quite a lot of times in my old builds, but now I can just slap that there. I mean, the one thing I am missing quite badly is. Obviously, tack, t tack team. You should pretty much always have a tack team because it is good, but I'm willing to risk it. I mean, I could swap that round, have override two there, and then have tack team one there. That's probably a better option, maybe. Yeah, for PvP. Uh, again, it's down to your own taste, isn't it? I mean, I'm going for this because I like to leave something a little bit fruity to play with here. But if I'm getting really battered, I might swap that out for a tack team, put override um, subsystem safeties two there, tack team one there, and then that covers my ass a little bit more. Or I might even get it rid of chemocyte weapons, you know, chemocyte lace, and just swap that for a tack team. Because I think chemocyte might have been nerfed recently, because I have noticed a little drop in its performance lately. So I don't know if they've tweaked it down or done something to it, but it definitely doesn't pack the punch it used to. Okay, well, I think we're done with that screen. Uh, I think we might have forgot one back here actually. Oh, this sort of stuff here. I mean, these in PvP are a must. These are from what you get from completing all your reputations. You know, you, you definitely need, need that in PvP. That's your like your last, last chance. You know, saloon, get out of jail, free card, whatever you want to call it. Pug that. But everybody, you know, if if they're good PvP players like myself, people know when you've just pressed the uh, "I'm in trouble, shit, shit my pants" button, and I'll just usually wait for you. <laughs> I'm probably cruel. I'll sort of follow your last trajectory in my mind and think, yeah, you're going to appear about there, and usually you appear right in front of me, and then I'll just finish you. But it's always handy, always handy. Uh, that one there is pretty handy for you big guys, you can stay in that and just sit there and spam all your shit. That's good for a little zap, uh, gets rid of pets quite nicely in my eyes, and that's, I don't know, just seems to be useless. But I have it there anyway, obviously I'm going to swap that with that new temporal one that comes out. When I get it, when I get it, right, okay, so your reps, ooh, hello. 
Let's do a quick bit of this. Sorry, guys. <gasps> yes, I can do it. Oh, God, I'm skinned. Yeah, I did spend loads of money earlier, people. I nearly went broke. Just trying to upgrade my bloody torpedo. Oh, I am skinned. Oh, my God. You know when you're in trouble when you're down to your last 15,000 EC. <laughs> Yeah, what was I trying to do earlier? Well, let's change the subject again quick, shall we? Yeah, so earlier when I was trying to upgrade this, and oh my god, I upgraded it so many bloody times. So imagine how many millions went into buying the bloody stuff for this because I ran out of all the gear to R&D them, so I had to buy the bloody upgrade points. Plus the dill I had to use, Jesus, went down from 100 and like 200k. And look how skint I am. Oh. 495 bucks so donations people donations you know there's charities out there that are more worthwhile than I'm not, I almost said starving children then but that's <laughs> no what more worthwhile is my, my torpedo this torpedo I need to know what it's going to turn into times two I'm hoping it will say damage maybe I don't know if it just comes up, question mark, question mark, death, kill everybody in one hit, times two, that would be sweet. But Cryptic won't do that. Oh my god, I can't believe I've got nothing. That's horrible, horrible feeling knowing you've just got an upgrade around the corner, but you can't get to it for a while. That's what they call the grind, people. Okay, so why did I come to this? Uh, okay, so obviously you need to upgrade all your crap, have all your reps up. Get all the red points, do all that jazz. Uh, okay, right, so I think we are almost there. Active space. Because I'm not even going to look at ground. This is only space, guys, so don't expect me to even think about doing that because I don't do ground. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but my character had more injuries than you can imagine. Because I never healed him, I just let him die all the time. Because I don't love him anymore. So, what we got here? We got beam overload, 35% shield, right okay so you got 30% chance to ignore, 35% of target shield for 4 seconds pretty sweet 4 seconds that means I'm pretty sure that means all weapons you're shooting at with so the way I'll see that is that if you've got a volley on the way and the beam overload hits first and procs that that volley of 4 seconds afterwards is going to absolutely destroy through all the shields, well 35% of shield pen plus if you look at the proc on this one was it 2.5% to endure, uh, to ignore 100% of target shields and 50% of target's damage resistance so again that kind of works inside with that I believe you know this is cryptic remember people so it could be uh, could be true could not work could cancel the other one out like there's a lot of things that do cancel each other out uh, I'm trying to remember there's like a I think it's the oh it's the other piece of this you know the uh, what is it ah don't worry I'm going off track again we're gonna come back right let's go back so we've got the engine weapons one I'm using this right so you got 5% chance plus 20 shield power for 10 secs after activating engine weapons so it's every time you're shooting basically it's going rapid fire so you're getting 5% chance you're gonna have 20% power on shields all the time pretty much aren't you uh, this one here we got the 3% chance 10 crit sev uh, it's pretty good worth having might as well uh, I can't think of anything else you would have in its place there's plenty of things like that but to be honest people put like hamlets on there and things like that and I just think well what's the point I mean, nowadays you've got so many things that reduce your cooldowns anyway, and all the extra bits, all the reciprocity. Uh, <laughs> I still can't say that bloody word. Somebody tell me how to say that damn word. But that one, plus you've got all the temporal stuff, you've got all these other bits that cool you down, and you've got your intel ability that cools it down. I mean, you don't really need any more cooldowns, really. I mean, you probably do for Omega, but even then, do you really? Who knows? Usually I just use one of everything, and to be honest, I'll show you in a minute, I'll do a little video of me flying, and you'll pretty much see that they're all pretty much on global, all the time, so, what's the problem? What is the problem, people? 
Okay, so where were we? The only one I do use is uh, this. You get 35% recharge reduced by 30, and that's for um, when you use these sort of things. These get reduced by 30, I believe. Yeah, it's this one. Yep, yeah, it is this one. So these two, every time you proc them, 35% charge reduce. So that's pretty good. Uh, you get 20% chance of power levels plus 25, so every time you use them again, either of these two, which they're proccing constantly, they're going to be doing that as well. Power levels plus 25. Everything goes right up there, and that always procs that one. Okay, and then this one here is uh, going to be used in conjunction with <coughs> this. As you can see, it's uh, plus 40 all damage resistance for 23 secs, so it increases that by 8 secs to 23, plus it gives you the damage resistance rating. As you can see, let me show you the, uh, where is it, 28? 43. Pretty good for an extra little move. That's not bad, and that's for 23 seconds. So by the time that's cooled down, see that's already 18. By the time that's done, it's going to be 43 again. It's going to be constantly on constant cycle. Well worth having. Okay. You know what? I think we're actually done. I think we're done. Right, there you go. Right, so there's your disruptor sort of build. You can obviously swap this round for phases. And if you're having phases, I'd use that in case of that. And have that with your quantum phased. I wouldn't bother having the free piece with a torpedo because a torpedo, people love it, but I think it sucks balls. Uh, yeah, it does suck balls. I will officially say it sucks balls. <laughs> right. Uh, let me do a little run for you. I'm going to pause it quickly and then I'm going to come back into the load screen. Okay, so there's a pretty damn good. I would say if you went into PvP, unless everybody was flying science ships and spamming the shite out of feedback pulse like everybody seems to do, and grab whale, no not grab whales, repulsors and blah blah blah, if you're flying against other cannon, if there are any other cannon users out there still, if you are, you'll give them a good, good kick in, you know, it will be a good fight, honestly, that's if you can fly this thing, remember, these things you have to have skill in flying, you can't just get out there. And also, because you have to spend a lot of time keeping your 45 degree arc on for your cannons, and you'll be flying really fast all the time, I'm probably going to get spat at for saying this, but I've tried it without and it's too much going on at the same time. I would use, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to use a macro. Definitely. I'm sorry, but I have these two bars on my space bar so and I have it set up so this bar goes first and so it'll go all the way down there and then it'll start this one go all that way down that direction so you know I have it set up so I want everything to proc in the right order obviously before I go to target I'm going to be flying in getting a bit of speed up then these two things they have like a 30 second before they have to fire so they can be in waiting so to speak before I get within 10k there's you're getting your power up ready now, you're just about to hit 10k, so you're hitting into all these bits now. And then the space bar, carry on, spamming it for a bit. Obviously you can do a massive splash hit as soon as you uh, get within 10k of the character, so... I would say macro it up everything on space bar, otherwise you're going to be really struggling. Also have your uh, shields, you know, shield... Uh, what is it? Shield uh, modulation have that on spacebar as well as well so you can distribute the shields automatically every time you're spamming this shit people say don't put weapons on your spacebar as well but I say do put your weapons on spacebar it, it makes no difference I've tried weapons on a random key you know an opposite key or on spacebar it makes no difference it doesn't seem to affect I mean people are gonna diss me and say yes it does it ruins the whole timing bullshit it actually definitely makes it work better. I've tried it on a separate key, I've tried it auto fire, I've tried it every other way, and having shields, spamming these two things and them on spacebar works perfectly. It does not make any difference, it actually works better. And I will put my scrotum on the table and let you chop it off if I'm talking shit. Oh my god. My kid's going to hear this. Why did I just say that? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, right, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to put it on pause for a minute, and then I'm going to come back when it's loading into a mission. 
I'll probably do something easy like uh, I like Vortex, I hate Conduit because you get every scimitar spammer wanting to do their 150k DPS showing off but you do realise that you're all following the same thing that everybody else does it's no different it's no different and it can't be fun boys it can't be fun just going into a map and pressing space bar and actually moving anywhere and then going to the next bar just press space bar and then gloat about your 140k DPS against uh, machines I say get out there change it up a bit try a torque build I have a scimitar torque build that's great fun a bit slow but it's great fun honestly beam fours please you're ruining the game guys everybody's going for the same crap right I'm going to shut up again I'm going to move on get a game going see you in two secs guys cheers alright here we go I'm back right I forgot to say uh, skills what was I doing yeah for any of you uh, quick zoomers there if you got time to pause it ah oh, you didn't get time but I was going to say I forgot to mention uh, what I use is Intel for my first choice and then a uh, pilot for my second choice because obviously you get the speed boost from the pilot and the um, attack pattern thing's pretty good for the whole hill as well so okay so here we go bit of kit for you guys with this uh, little cannon build that I was working on let's see how we do oh the lady on the old uh, speed up there it's a big green blob do red red absolutely annihilate Oh, one of those things. I've never actually used one. So. 
about a week, but just have to make this pause as tired as we used to. Space barring, nothing else. What I'm saying. Not actually utilising anything perfectly. Plus, as well, I know it's a lot of those people they still use double nothing. Not real high defense, you can't actually use it. Jump the center one down, I believe. You have to go down the You know what I mean. As you can see, it's not going to be able to work. Now I should have. Alright. Keep up with the beam spammers. Maybe not over. Like usually, you know, when you do people do, people say they're the best damage, the highest damage, blah blah blah, or SGFs, but to be honest, it's not really like you're doing the most damage. You're doing it to everything. See, I like to just focus everything on one. See how much I can get out of it. Right, so there you go, let's put that in the right one. see, not too shabby for a little raider. Raiders are good. Okay, so I think you're probably bored of listening to my voice about now because I pretty much forced all that in waffled on, but as I said, what I'll do, I will do a torpedo build. Yes, I will. The next time I will do a torpedo build. It won't be this ship because I think for an ultimate torpedo you actually need to have the command seating ability. I don't think it really works on this. Plus it's too quick. I mean torpedo build you don't really need ridiculous speed. You just need yeah, command abilities. Probably definitely five works up front. Anyway, right, I'm gonna go because if you wanna know a torpedo build, obviously click on the next uh video which will be a torpedo build. I won't bother talking about it now. See you later guys, thanks for your listening thanks for your ears and thanks for sitting there and putting up with my crap now you can click on the next youtube video and enjoy your evening thank you